Hey, it's Rex. See what I want to you guys in the morning. I'm talking to Chris Fenn. Chris, uh, is this your own bus? This one all yours to yourself, or are the other guys sleep? Is it that big now? Where everybody in the bay, nine buses traveling yeah. now? Or <laughs> I wish. Yeah. You know, it's uh, we still share buses, but we got a couple extra ones now. But so. I mean, since what? You've been at the band since '97. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, were things always this nice for you guys, or did y'all have to do the whole uh, 15 passenger church van? At oh, it time? was. Yeah, it was bad. We were there was like 16 of us on one bus, and you know, there's only 12 bunks. And yeah. We had to change in the bus, you know, we had to store all our clothes in here, like everything, it smells really nice. Well now that, uh, I guess the only thing that smells bad, I read uh, today somewhere that the, you're not happy uh, every six months or so with the smell of the mask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they definitely, after, you know, after a few months of touring or whatever, they, they get pretty right, but, yeah. you know, we try and clean them out a little better nowadays. I saw y'all here probably, I don't know, what was it, three, four years ago when y'all were here, and it was amazing to see the crowd was maybe about a third of what it is right now, and it seemed like all kids, and now at this time, you've got such a spread on the audience, it's like everybody seems to be a Slipknot fan everybody seems to like the band now I mean has it made it easier to write music or harder for you guys well we never we never write for a specific thing we don't sit down and we're like okay we need to write three singles for this record and, yeah you know we just we never have done that yeah you know and um, I remember early on in the day like one of the record label guys was like can you write you know four weight and bleeds for this next one <laughs> and I'm like uh <laughs> No, <laughs> the record guy's sitting five feet from us right <laughs> well, now, uh, watching. <laughs> but, <laughs> Can you um, do this again? Yeah, uh, but we, you know, we we just it has to pass the nine man test first, you know, before it makes the record anyway, and that's us. And we're pretty, uh, you know, involved in in what we do musically and artistically, as far as the stage show, as far as the lighting, like we keep everything really hands-on still to this day. Was there ever a time in, in, in the inception of the band in the first couple of years where you guys actually had to skip eating so you could buy, uh, we need this light, or we need this equipment, or we're gonna need this, let's not let's not take care of ourselves so much, we're gonna just keep pumping money into this uh, this dream that we have of the band. I mean, were there some, there had to have been some pretty lean times there in the beginning. Right? Oh, absolutely, yeah, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was so bad that, you know, we couldn't even save money for things. Yeah. Like the only money that we got was like I remember thinking we made eight bucks a day. Really? You know, for a long time. By the time you spread it out amongst you know yeah, nine, nine like, guys. You know, it's you, if you buy bought a new pair of shoes, you're screwed for that week you know, <laughs> for anything else. But um, you know, we we still do that. You know, we still don't pay ourselves because we invest in this band. Yeah. You know, to, even to this day, you know, with the the hydraulic drum kits and. You know the pyro and and yeah. all that stuff. You know it's it costs money to do, and you know we'd rather put on a good show than you than know, have stuff in a garage somewhere that you're exactly. not going to see for six or eight months out of the year. Exactly. We yeah. we always want to be on the cutting edge of what's going on. Big family. You got a big family besides the nine guys in the band. I mean, where do you come from? Yep, come from yeah. a big Iowa family. Yeah. You know? Everybody's still there. We all still live there. Do they flip out when they see uh, film clips of the uh, seven and a half inch or so? Right. No, they're like, oh, look at our son. Uh, yeah. No, they dig it. Actually, yeah? you know, they're some of my biggest fans. Really? Yeah. What kind of razzing did you go through when you first started putting on that mask? Because I read all kinds of stuff about it even years ago. How back when the. Uh, uh, people were affected by the Black Plague, how the doctors actually used to wear masks with big long noses that they'd fill up with different herbs and whatnot so they wouldn't have to smell the, the dead. When I joined the band, they had already had that mask made. Do you take these things with you and decide the night of what you want to wear or how does it work? No, I usually do it for a whole tour. Yeah? You know, and then like at the end of the tour I'll retire that mask and then build another one because usually they're pretty tore up at that point where so they're unfixable and, yeah. you know, it's just time to get a new one. Originally you wanted to be uh, the drum tech for the band, mm -hmm. and then they said, wait a second, this guy's, you know, he's great. Do you come up with all some of these different instruments on your own? You're like, you know what, I know a guy who welds, let's uh, let's let's put some kegs together, and yeah. now you have a bat tech. <laughs> that was all, that was all clown. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, he was the guy that kind of, you know, made and designed the early drum kits, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I remember driving that drum kit down to the small town in Iowa and having some dude re-weld it, and they're really? like, what is this going to be? You're like, and clown like, did this, he was yeah. the guy who welded it, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I, I hit it with a bat he welds. Uh -huh. I'd like to ask what's next, but you know what? I kind of want to be surprised with everybody else. But now you guys are getting so much 
I guess, credibility and respect. What's it like now to have people really recognize this band and say, you know what, these guys aren't just a bunch of clowns jumping around mm -hmm. in masks. They're actually really skilled musicians. Um, I'm not sure because, it, you know, I don't think it would have lasted this long if the songs and the musicianship wasn't there, Yeah. you know, to begin with. So, um, you know, I think they really started to notice, you know, during our first record, you know, and, and when we play live and, you know, people would you know sing the songs like it was really cool like yeah. we knew then you know that it wasn't like just a gimmick appreciate you guys talking to me today and and i gotta tell you uh, uh it, it almost feels like a partnership between uh c101 and this band because i've i've personally been at the uh, radio station 19 years come tuesday and nice. i've played you guys from the second that that cd uh came into our studio so it's a pleasure meeting you yeah you got to get down here if you got a ticket if you don't have a ticket I I'm not quite sure exactly what to tell you. I, I guess if you stand out on uh, Ocean Drive or on Chaparral, you may actually be able to hear the the uh, echoes of the band. But I, this is another uh, living proof moment. Earlier in the week, when I told you, I said buy a ticket. Trust me, this show will sell out, uh, and I, I'm happy to say that we were right, man. Chris, nice meeting you once again, brother. Thanks a lot. Thanks, you got it. Appreciate it, bro.